unpacking. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word? Is it a room full of IT nerds coding away with multiple screens trickling down? Yep, well, that's what I first thought when I heard the word hacking. But did you know there are actually two different definitions of hacking? The first one, this is the unauthorized access to data. And the second one, and this is the one that I will actually be talking about, is the active participation. So the active participation of quickly implementing ideas. So when I um, finished university, I just found it so hard to find a job. I went through hundreds of interviews with every PR agency that I knew. And I was thinking to myself, how am I going to sustain myself? This is just too hard for me. So I was thinking, well, maybe I can start my own business instead of waiting 10 years or five years or two years. I can just do it right here, right now, develop an app, make some money. It'll be awesome. I'm going to have flexible working. I can work anytime, anywhere. It's going to be fabulous. Who's had that feeling? Yeah. So I went up to one of my friends and I was like to him, oh man, we're going to be like the best people ever. But what <laughs> turned, what I initially thought would be a two hour conversation turned into a two minute chat. And it went something like this. Oh man, I've got this brilliant idea. I'm going to make money off this app. It's going to be awesome. Okay, that sounds great. Why do you want to do that? Uh, I don't know. I just want to maybe make an awesome difference to the world. Uh, okay, so what is the exact problem you're solving? Ooh, uh, let me get back to you. So as you can see, I had no business acumen. I had no idea what design thinking was or creative problem solving. And I actually thought a startup was like a, something that you put into bread to make it rise like a starter. So I was like, OK, man, what's going on here? So I approached another friend, and she was like to me, Angela, why don't you just go to a hackathon? It would be a great opportunity to get some technical skills, meet some like-minded people. And I thought to myself, oh, OK, that, that's a bit weird, but it's only two days over a weekend. Let me just give it a go. So who's actually been to a hackathon before? Yep, a couple of you guys. So a hackathon is essentially a two to three day creative intensive competition where a diverse group of people come together to solve problems using technology. So you normally register as an individual. You get into a team, normally with people that you don't know, and then you define what the problem or opportunity is. And this is really um, pivotal in understanding what those customer needs are. Then you ideate and come up with brilliant ideas, think you know, creatively, and then select a couple that you want to test and just prototype. And hopefully, at the end, you'll have a working prototype that you'll pitch back to a judging panel, and they'll give you constructive feedback straight away. It's really an awesome opportunity to get to know yourself, be surrounded by like-minded people, and to also experiment in a really safe environment. So today, my message that I want to convey to every single one of you is that everyone, everyone can contribute to innovation. And so I'll be telling you my three hacks on how to get the best out of them. So the first one is to celebrate your uniqueness. Now, when I first um, heard of the word innovation, I didn't think that it was something that I could do. I was like, oh, yeah, there's Richard Branson, there's Elon Musk, there's Mark Zuckerberg. They're the real innovators out there. But what I actually realized was that when I first went to my first couple of hackathons, everyone can contribute to innovation because innovation is in our DNA. But before you go to a hackathon, you need to have an open mindset. You need to be open to collaboration, be open to thinking outside of the box if there is a box. You need to be open to unlearn what you've learned. You need to be open to be adaptive to different environments. You need to be open to working with different types of people. And having this open mindset is really important 
to have confidence in your skill sets. And once you have confidence in those skill sets, you can use that as a pivot point to sharpen your skills and to also learn new ones. So I started out um, in public relations, so I was really good at writing media releases. And when you go to a hackathon, there's something called a minimum viable team. So you have the hustler, the hipster, and the hacker. So you have the hustler, and this is the person who communicates that proposed solution to the, um, to the audience. You have the hipster, and this is the person who designs that customer experience. And then you have the hacker, and this is the person who rapidly builds that solution. And so I would come in with my written communication skills on, and I was like, yes, I'm gonna be the hustler. And that actually enabled me to practice, to pitch in front of an audience. In fact, I'm a natural introvert, so it's taken a lot of time for me to actually get up to this stage. And so while I was, had to write these pictures, I also had to learn about the customer journey and understand what the features and benefits were for the customer, as well as understand different applications of technology and know when to use them and when not to use them. When I started going to hackathons, I also realized I was, A, very resourceful. So I would go to a hackathon and spin up a website really quickly, belt out all the advertising so we can identify those opportunities. I was a relationship builder, so events like this, I would go on Twitter and use the hashtag, follow people who are around the room, and also send a personal note to all the judges and mentors through LinkedIn. And I was also resilient. I didn't just go to one or two hackathons. I went to 30 to 40 hackathons over three years. And that, to me, was my second university degree through experiential learning. So remember, don't give up. And so once you've kind of understood yourself and your unique value, you soon realize that everyone around you is awesome. And so that leads me to my second hack. And this is that you don't know who you're going to sit next to. So at my first hackathon up there, I sat next to a lady called Rachel, and she just finished her university degree. She was really great at utilizing tools like InVision and was really out there in terms of building really quick prototypes for applications. On the other side was actually an 11-year-old boy, and he was already learning to code. I was twice his age at that time, and I was like, damn, what am I doing to myself? <laughs> Seriously. So we ended up winning the New South Wales division. And so when I was actually in Melbourne in the finals, we sat down and, you know, going to the co-working space and I was sitting next to two people. On one side of me, I had a 13-year-old boy who already started his own business to build gaming applications. And on the other side of me was another 15-year-old boy who had just casually won $10,000 to build an app to help truck drivers with their safety in the evening. And they even flew him to the US. And I was like, whoa, I'm hashtag mind blown. What is happening here? <laughs> and so what you realize is that going to hackathons, you also get to meet a lot of mentors and amazing people. That includes heads of businesses, managing directors of global corporate organizations, partners at firms, and a lot of startup founders. It's amazing. You'll even get companies like Canva and Atlassian, who are the two unicorn startups in Australia, as well as big companies like Facebook and Google. And what I found is that after socializing with these people, you really get a glimpse of what it's like to work in their organizations. And do you remember at the start when I said I found it so hard to find a job in PR? The more hackathons I did, the more projects I had to add on my LinkedIn profile, and sooner or later, I was getting PR agencies calling me up, asking if they could interview me, because I had the ability to go into an environment and gather all my learnings from different industries, different segments, and be able to join the dots between that. In fact, my current position as the head of innovation and growth at my current company was actually created 
after I ran a smart cities hackathon. So can you believe it? I was actually on the judging panel. On one side of me, I had the president, and on the other side of me, I had the head of HR, so human resources. And so I ran this whole program, and they kind of pulled me up back afterwards, and they were like, uh, Angela, what are you actually good at? And how can we use the energy that you provided and use that to the best ability in your current company? And I was like, wow, I've got an opportunity to actually create something that didn't exist before. So you don't know who you're going to sit next to. And so my last one is that it's okay to flirt. I know what you're all thinking, <laughs> but it actually means failing to learn. So as I told you, I went to you know, 30 to 40 hackathons and I've had the worst happen to me. I've had mind blanks delivering presentations. I've had servers crash when we were demonstrating our working prototype. I've even had teammates step out of the hackathon and just disappear out of nowhere. So it's okay. Just put a fun lens on it. So why don't we turn it into fun learning? So right now, when I go to hackathons myself, um, I always try and learn something out of it in terms of emerging technologies. <coughs> so this is includes, um, there was actually one hackathon that was called Startup Bus. And we went from Sydney all the way to Melbourne. And then we were actually doing something around custom-made glasses. So we went to ANU and we asked them, can you just print like a custom-made 3D printed glasses? And what they did was they delivered this pair of glasses and they actually drove all the way to Sydney and delivered that to us at SIDSTART, which was the biggest startup conference in the Southern Hemisphere. That was amazing. Um, there was another MasterCard hackathon where we toyed around with virtual reality. And so you know how normally you design a circle and then you kind of get a sphere out of that? Virtual reality actually gives another dimension because you can actually walk around it, see it, touch it, and feel it, and that's a different way. And we were like, wow, this is amazing. Last year, I went to another hackathon called the EOS Hackathon. So that's around building on a blockchain platform called EOS, and there was $100,000 up for grabs for the winner. I was so nervous. But in the end, we pitched and we secured $50,000 worth of venture capital money um, to do something around digital scarcity. So hackathons are a great way to learn, fail to learn. And they're a great opportunity to get to know yourself, have that and understand your unique value, as well as be surrounded by amazing people. And it's a great way to test because innovation is in not just my DNA, but in your DNA. And remember, it's a journey and not a destination. Hackathons are just pressurized environments and it is very challenging. But when you look back and reflect on all the hills that you've climbed and the distance that you've come, think about it you can really make a positive difference in this world. So, what are you waiting for? <laughs>